This week on the Ritual Misery podcast, uh, there's something in the air about 13. Probably more than one thing, but we're going to discuss two of them. Uh, Adobe and At Games had some announcements this week. Other people had announcements too, but we'll get to those as well. Oh, you mean like Apple and Sony and Microsoft and others? Dude, you're supposed to like, bear, like, you're supposed to wait until the show before you tell them everything. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 250 for the 25th of June. It's a Thursday, of course, and this is 2020. I'm Amos, that's Kent. We don't have a guest tonight because we scared them all off last show. How are y'all doing, man? How are you doing, Kent? How are you doing? I am great, man. It's Thursday. It's Ritual Misery time. I'm super excited. We've got a lot of cool stuff to talk about tonight. We do. We have a lot of cool stuff. Um... Real quick, uh, there, there's there's going to be there's a few changes, and I want to see if you can catch up. On, well, there's just one change, but I want to see if you catch it tonight. So be on the lookout for a change. Ooh, only one? Just one. Do I have to find the one change? Yes, <laughs> find the one change. Um, Here's a hint. It'll be something having to do with high production value. <laughs> oh, so man, that would be a change. All right, so I, I figured it out. <laughs> higher production value. It's it, it's a very limited scope if you just narrow it down to high production value items. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, right on. How you been, man? Uh, I've been living, doing a lot of yard work. Uh, you know, uh, working on DTNS this week, which has been, you know, as I mentioned in the pre-show, that's that's a that's a matter of uh, mistaken identity. I'm sure I'm not supposed to be on that show. <laughs> I'm sure, I don't belong anywhere near there. Yeah, in, in, imposter says imposter syndrome is alive and well. I um, I sometimes have this wild fantasy that I'm a podcaster. So um, yeah, yeah well, I get I get it. I stay get it. on this show and you'll uh, prove that fantasy wrong. <laughs> hey, um, so we, we usually talk about things that we've done in the last week. This week, I think we're going to talk about things we've seen. And I want to start out with uh, you starting with yours, because it's a little less weighty than mine. Ooh, that's saying a lot, because <laughs> mine is a little mine's a little weighty. I know. Um, so, <laughs> so, so a few years ago, Netflix came out with a, a TV show called 13 Reasons Why, and it, it released uh, to a little bit of controversy. Mm -hmm. uh, did you ever watch 13 Reasons Why? Um, I watched some of the first, first season, but I was present for all the discussions that my daughters and my wife had. Excellent. Okay, that's I'm super glad to hear that. Yeah. So when the show came out, I I read a little bit about it and I decided that wasn't really something that I was interested in in checking out. Um, basically, it's a it's a show about high school kids who are dealing with the aftermath of a suicide of one of their classmates. Right. Uh, and then <clears throat> the the premise of the show is that the girl instead of leaving a suicide note, she left a series of cassette tapes. tapes. Yeah. That explains the 13 reasons why she uh, decided to end her life. It, I, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would counter that in saying that it provides her a means to explain her reasoning, not that it gives yes. reasons. Because the two, well, sure, kind sure, of the sure, same sure, words, sure. but very different it connotations. It, it's the things that she felt were um, right. uh, factors that led to the mindset of making that right. decision. And, that, and that's what I want to um, say is it's not the objective reasons. It's her perception of the reasons. Correct. Like, yes. It's, it's from her um, perspective. So my youngest son, my 16 year old son has seen the four seasons of it. There's four seasons now. And these are way, these we are not, discussing this is it. not a lighthearted, lighthearted episodic kind of thing. This is not big bang theory. This is, it's, it's intended oh, yeah, and it's meant very, to be, something to talk about after the show. Right. Absolutely. And, and this is something I, I, I have a little bit of regret that I didn't watch it with my high school student son. Um, because this is, this is something that I, I feel like every parent and every high school 
student should watch this series together. Now, I'm not making a final judgment yet because I'm only four episodes into the 13 episode series. Uh, but it so it, you're four I episodes think it in responsibly. You're four episodes into the first series of 13 episodes. Correct. Okay, that is correct. Yes. Um, and I, I feel like it very responsibly and very realistically deals with the issues of not just suicide and depression, but also sexual assault, drug abuse, um, uh, 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 teenager bullying, um, all, all sorts of like pressures yep. that teenagers uh, deal with. And and also p- like parents as well. It, there are a few scenes from p- parental perspective of how they like what they observe their children doing and how they feel helpless at times to yep. like, communicate with their kids and things like that. And I think it's a wonderful conversation starter for parents and teenagers. And uh, like I said, I haven't, se- I haven't been all the way through the first, uh, the first season. So I can't make a final uh, declaration on my recommend or unrecommend. Or, but uh, for based on what I've seen so far, I definitely would encourage parents to check that out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, and also I, I did want to say uh, 13reasonswhy.info is their official website for the for the show. It not only talks about the show, but more importantly, it's got links to to like crisis helplines and um, a bunch of like uh, uh, blogs and FAQs and things like that 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 can help people understand uh, you know depression and and uh, different issues that they might be dealing with. Yeah, we uh, we actually had a long discussion last week after the uh, Diamond Club game night um, on Friday night or whatever where we discussed mm-hmm. a lot of the issues and I don't want, I don't want to take away from the people that made those contributions. So I'm not going to say too much here cause I'd, I'd clearly be ripping off better thoughts than I had myself, but, um, it, it's, it's definitely something to look into and look into the history of and how it started and how it came about because there are more warnings now than there were originally. And the warnings are more focused and, um, there's been a lot of reaction to it and it's been, it's been very, very interesting to watch how, how, not just how the show is perceived, but how people have perceived the reactions to it, and uh, not just Netflix reaction to it, but the you know interpersonal reactions to it. It's a very interesting series, and it's one that I would probably really enjoy watching um, for that for that perspective. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what? So what did you watch this week that was weighty? I also watched Netflix, except instead of the 13 Reasons Why, I watched a documentary entitled The 13th. Oh, I see a theme emerging yes. here. Yes. Now, now, Kent, do you know what The 13th could refer to? Um, I'm guessing The 13th Amendment? It is The 13th Amendment. Did, and what does The 13th Amendment say? The th- Oh, I'll give, I you, I'll give you a hint. Thir- I'll give you a hint. There's been a lot of uh, uh, streaming services that have had packages of 13 documentaries, TV shows, and other things like that, all bundled together in light of recent world events. Um, yeah. So, so 13th Amendment, if if, if I remember correctly, is the basically the emancipation, uh, li- the legalese for the emancipation of of black slaves in America. The the abolish, uh, abolishment of slavery. You would almost be correct. Um, I just looked at, I just looked it up. It says uh, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except as a punishment for crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. Right. So does that end slavery? Well, <laughs> um, not completely, not completely, but it does, um, it does ab- abolish the legality for like cons- conscription, like b- basically, uh, kidnapping people for the purpose of making them slaves. R- almost. <laughs> <laughs> basically okay. the 13th is a documentary on the, the, cl- the, 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 the phrasing of the 13th amendment and how, on the surface, it says, "Yeah, slaves or slaves or slavery is bad. We should get rid of slavery, uh, but also we're going to keep slavery in this one special circumstance, 
that we're going to call prison. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. And that's all we're going to say about it. And then all the, all the states started passing laws to increasingly incriminate black people in petty crimes Mm. that allowed them to be imprisoned and therefore maintain their slavery. Got it. Okay. Now, and this is the this is the subject matter of the thirteenth. Yes, that is that is that is the overall punchline. And if you take that and expand on it for uh, almost two hours with tons of facts, knowledge, quotes, and really really smart people that have studied this kind of stuff, you have the thirteenth, a documentary about the Thirteenth Amendment. From that sounds from, fascinating. I I'm going to add that to my watch list. A documentary about the 13th Amendment from the contemporary black point of view. Yeah, it was it was fucking phenomenal. Like, I was watching it. They said, hey, dinner's ready. I was about an hour into it. I came downstairs. I rewound it and started over. Oh, wow. I said, fuck it. I'm going to watch yep. this shit again. It, I... I don't like documentaries that are just throwing facts at you. I like them to have sort of a narrative and sort of a, a construction to them. Like keep me interested in the facts and build upon it. Mm. This didn't have much of a narrative to it. It just laid the facts out in chronological order, including quotes and references and things like that. And it was just interesting in and of itself. It was amazing. So I would highly recommend it. Okay, and cool. The, link link the in the show notes. Team. Yep. Right on, right on, um, right on, um, man. So, so let's lighten up a, a little bit. Of, <laughs> yeah. So, so a lot of a lot of tech news is coming out lately. Um, a lot of big conferences and uh, tech conventions and things like that uh, tend to happen during the summertime. But uh, we happen to live in plague world right now, so we're not having a lot of conferences in the traditional sense. Um, so everything's kind of going online. Um. So one of the so one of the things that happens this time of year is announcements and yes. releases of software and yes. releases of hardware and yes. things like that. Um, so the first thing that that uh, that I want to address because we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get into some things, uh, but the first thing that I want to address is something that I actually was able to do this week. So on my arc, my uh, Legends Ultimate Arcade uh, system, it allows for firmware updates and we have a firmware release pretty much every week and sometimes it just kind of you know oh bug fixes right but usually there's some new feature <laughs> fixed and misplaced added pixel. or something like that <laughs> yeah yeah um so this past week so la- actually a week ago yesterday so so last wednesday the release uh was the First time that at games allowed for third party apps to be added to the arcade, uh, which is pretty, pretty phenomenal because not only can can at games update their software, but they're allowing for third parties to add functionality as well. And uh, I'm not sure if any of our audience has ever heard of something called CoinOps, uh, but CoinOps is basically a front end uh, GUI, basically like a graphical user interface for playing arcade games. Typically you would install it on your PC to play ROMs, um, things like that. So CoinOps X is a, is a software, uh, an app version basically of CoinOps that you can install on your at games arcade machine that changes the, the graphical interface drastically. And I spent many, many hours this week tweaking and playing with CoinOps X and my arcade looks way different now. (laughs) It is like, it is so freaking cool. I've got almost a thousand games on it now. Well, actually I'm over a thousand. If you, if you count the built-in, the 350 built-in games, I've got over a thousand games on the system now. And, um, if if you hang out for the post show, I might uh, I might show people what that looks like. But that that was that was definitely the nerdiest, geekiest thing that I did this week. Nice, nice. Um, I I wanted to bring about something. That I, this is going to divide the audience. Some people are going to love it. Some people are going to hate it. Adobe Creative Cloud. They had an update on Thursday of last week. It provided several updates. Blah 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 blah. I don't give a shit. The only thing I care about is that, for instance, when I take 
the good day internet video and I chop it up and I take the DTNS part of it out of it, it would usually take about an hour to f- fully compress and process that just the DTNS part so I could get it posted to YouTube. It takes about two minutes now. Okay. Like two minutes. That's that's amazing because it takes me like two hours to do that with it, RMP. It's fucking insane. <laughs> it's so quick. Like they they didn't even they didn't even say anything about how uh, they said it performance enhancements. They didn't say anything else. I can tell you right oh now, God. like th- they 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 fucked their stories up on that one because that is the story. I don't care zonal toning in Lightroom Classic and this. Who gives a shit? I can compress a 30 minute video down to a a quarter of the size in a 30th the time it used to take. That is, <laughs> that is unfathomable. <laughs> like what the hell do they just like delete a line of code I, or <laughs> I don't, they've been saying for years they were going to, they're, they're going to like, Oh, we know we're behind uh, final cut pro on max and this and that. We know, we know we're working on, we're working I don't know what the hell they did. I maybe they maybe it's just my particular settings that got updated. I don't I don't fucking know. But I can tell you that it's insane quick now. That's fantastic. That that is amazing. I'm I cannot wait to try that out. That yeah. is that is awesome. Yeah, it's um so Debbie Scottis one says personal pet peeve of mine. I hate that all the colors are blue for the icons grr. I actually like the new icons. <laughs> I was so tired of the old square icons that just, they look like office icons and I didn't like it because I don't like, <laughs> um, I like the new icons. Uh, I wish they'd update all the rest of them. They're only like half updated. So like, what the fuck? Why, why wouldn't you just push new up anyway? And Photoshop, for the, <laughs> Photoshop for the iPad pro is out and I haven't, haven't tried it yet. So there's that. If you would like to get all this and uh, more insight, actually, there's not really more insight. There's extra content. Yeah, there's yeah. there's definitely extra content if yeah. you go to patreon.com slash ritual misery. Yeah. Uh, so that is our Patreon campaign where typically we accept donations from, from people that want to contribute. But for at least for the summer... We are not accepting money from people. We're accepting all the patrons that want to join us, join the club, get access to all the extra content for the low, low price of zero dollars and zero cents for, I would say, at least through the end of summer. We are not charging patrons. I mean, I don't want to spoil the surprise, so it's probably going to be around September, which happens to be happens to coincide when I'm going to start hopefully coming back to the show more full time. I you know but for now just go join the fucking patreon yeah hell yeah uh the the biggest thing that we get from uh, now don't get me wrong we love the financial contributions that that we traditionally get it it allows us to buy beer when we go places that's right absolutely (laughs) but the number one joy that i get from from having a patreon account with with several pay well not several a lot of patrons on it uh, is just the community, the community building, and then the it's a show of support that encourages us to continue to do the Ritual Misery podcast. Yep. So check it out, patreon.com slash ritual misery. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of give my hand up a little bit here, but it's time for part of the show. But we owe we well, you know what? I somebody won a prize and they were owed something anyway, and now now we have this. What time is it? Ken. He's all powerful. He's extraordinary. A genius. Game. I cannot contain myself. Ken's Game. Presented by Stephen Cogswell. We had a hidden game, a hidden contest in one of our patron exclusives that only one person responded to. And that was Stephen Cogswell. He wins. He wins the fucking prize. So now, Ken's Games. At no uh, financial cost to Stephen Cogswell, uh, Kent's Games for the foreseeable future will be will be presented in honor of Stephen Cogswell. That is fantastic. So that is so cool. This is literally the first time I've heard that sounder, and I love it. And congrats, Cogswell. Um, 
man, I feel like congrats me. I feel like I'm the winner on this. <laughs> That's, uh, that's that is awesome. So we had an exceptionally long Patreon uh, uh, um, exclusive post, and we basically said, if you reply to us to our email with uh, the two twenty two, because it was at the two hour twenty two minute mark in that post, mm-hmm. if you replied to us and if you were one of the, the first two people, you would win a prize. And he was the only one. So contest <laughs> the and I checked right before we went live. The contest is now closed. Stephen Cogswell, I really hope you enjoy your sponsorship of Kent's Gains, which happens to be most people's <laughs> favorite part of the show. Amazing. This week, oh, the wait, game wait, is wait, entitled... Wait, wait, wait. Big thanks to Big Voice J, Coford, Sam, Renegu, W. Scott is one, and Flavor Toothpaste for their contributions to That There Sounder. Amazing. I knew nothing of this. That is so freaking cool. Thank you guys. Thank you everyone that was a part of that. That, also, is, that al- is so cool. Also, Kent, happy birthday. I'm not getting you shit this year, so enjoy your sounder. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh man. So good. So good. All right. So on to the game. I have t- 10 questions for you. The name of the game is Crystallography. Do you have any idea what this game might be about? Well, initially, I thought maybe it was the geography of Crystallis, the NES game from long ago that I loved so, so much and have yet to find in any shape, way, or form that I could actually play again. But then I thought, no, that's just too obscure. And I don't even think I've ever told anybody how much I loved Crystallis or Crystallis, whatever, however you want to say it. But uh, it's like one of my favorite games of all time. And uh, I've lost all hope on that. So I'm just going to say... No, I have no idea what Chris, uh, uh, <laughs> crystallography is. I, I could not think of a name for this game, and I, I kind of came across this randomly. So this is episode 250 of the Ritual Misery podcast, which means that we're we're about a quarter of the way through our tenure as hosts of this here podcast, because we said a long time ago, we're going to go to a thousand episodes and we're calling it quits. Yeah. Uh, so it has been how many years? Uh, Since RMP? Uh, 2020, we're coming up on six years. Six years. August, since... uh, uh, October, August or October would be six years. Six years of the Ritual Misery podcast, which means that Ritual Misery podcast began in the year 2014, mm-hmm. which, according to the internet, was the year of crystallography. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Well, I was so, deployed half that year. I don't. It doesn't surprise me that I missed out on something. I never like to give you a clue about what the game is going to be because I don't want you to cheat ahead of time. So this is what I named the game. It really doesn't mean anything. And you changed okay. names right before the show, by the way. I did see that. I saw a different name there. I was like, what the hell is that? And then later on, uh, all right, now I really don't know what the hell that is. Okay, <laughs> fine, cool. He took the obscure yeah. and fucked it up even more. So... My questions, my 10 questions for you tonight are Mm -hmm. all about video game news that happened in the year 2014. Oh, shit. (laughs) Some will be easy. Some will be difficult. We will see which ones are which. Awesome. Let's do it. First question. Which online streaming service was purchased by Amazon for $970 million? Justin TV. (sighs) I feel like giving you a half point on this one because you're not completely wrong. However, Justin TV by this point had already become the answer I was looking for, which of course is Twitch. I'm giving you a half a point. (laughs) Had it already become Twitch? It definitely was Twitch by then. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh, well. Yeah, so I'm get, so half point on that one, and I just realized I don't have my sounds with me right I, now. I, I so. got my I got my red lights though. So, uh, <laughs> all right. Second question: Which virtual reality brand was purchased by Facebook for two point three billion dollars? Oculus. Ding 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 ding. That is correct. Yep, that one I knew. Name the controversy that stemmed from a sexism-based harassment campaign. Gamergate. 
That is correct. We did a whole episode on that. And we still don't understand it. Uh, what a what a shitty like, thing. Like I get what it was, but I don't understand why the fuck it happened in the first place. Right. Yeah. yeah. Number four. Based on Metacritic and game rankings scores, which was the most highly acclaimed video game of the year? And this is a multiple choice. Grand Theft Auto V. Ooh. The Last of Us. Shovel Knight. Ah. Uh. Which one was the most highly acclaimed the last of the year of 2014? You say The Last of Us. Mm-hmm. And... Oh, the GTA 5? It is, in fact, GTA 5. Ah. Uh, the, last of, the Last of Us was number two, and Shovel Knight was number three. Ah. Yeah, but they were pretty close. They were pretty close. I think, uh, I think GTA 5 got a 97 or 98 yeah. overall. And uh, Last of Us, I think, was like right behind with like ninety six point five or something, and right. Shovel Knight was like ninety five or something. Yeah. It was it was pretty close. Spoiler: right, I have The Last of Us five. and still haven't played it. <laughs> uh, number five: On which platform was the highest grossing game of the year? Another multiple choice: PC, mobile, or PlayStation. On which platform was the highest grossing game of the year? I'm talking about 2014, right? On 2014. Choices are PC, mobile, or PlayStation. I'm going to have to go... Oh, because it's... Uh... <laughs> Shit. So, it's... it's... <laughs> Let's analyze my thinking here. Um, PC, mobile, or PlayStation are your choices. So mobile is the most... Mobile is the least likely in the overall market of things, which is why I think that it's a contender. You didn't say Xbox, so so that's fine. But that also cancels out any any games that were on Xbox because they would have ridden the the stream as well. Uh, So then you got to look at PC and PlayStation and what was released on both of those uh I mean GTA 5 was released on both but I think it was released on PlayStation first and then PC later uh I'm gonna, uh, of course Last of Us was a PlayStation exclusive um That's a tough one man I'm going to go I want to go mobile <laughs> After all that deliberation, you go to the least likely. Uh, by the power of microtransactions. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> it was, in fact, mobile. There was a game called Puzzles and Dragons, which made like a billion fucking dollars. It was a, <sighs> a free to play mobile game on, I believe, iOS and Android. And yeah, it cleaned the fuck up. It was ridiculous. Um, awesome. yeah, it was a free to play only through microtransactions did they, they become the highest grossing game of 2014. Insane. All right. Number six, name the digital collectible card game released by Blizzard Entertainment. Oh, um, Hearthstone. Ding, ding, ding. I knew that. Said, some it, of these would be very easy. <laughs> I was playing that in the desert in the beta. I got I I was invited in the last round of beta before it went live. So I got like three days to play it. And of course I worked all three of those days. So I basically didn't sleep for those three days. And then as it, <laughs> as soon as it went live, I had the day off and I was just like, Yeah, I'm done with it. It's not my thing. Dude, yeah, I was, dude, I was borderline obsessed with this game when it came out. Yeah, for probably about two to three months. You and Lucas both, and then, right? yeah, oh yeah, and Lucas still plays it on occasion, but he, his, like, his obsession way outlasted mine, and I haven't played it in probably five years. Like, I haven't even opened the app in probably five years. Yep. Um, not that I mean, I still think it's a good game, and like Lucas will talk to me about it, and I'll be interested in it, and I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to play. It. And then I just never do. There's 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 entirely <laughs> oh, too much it, there's entirely too much game theory involved. I just wouldn't be able to keep up. Like I don't have that much time to learn all the game theory. That's yeah. 
And that's really well, what and it that's was. what I think it is. It's the the ever changing meta, which is what makes it remain popular. Right. Uh, but but for me, like I like to master a game. I don't know, like w- with ever changing meta, it's very difficult to to master. Uh, so that's that's probably why I'm not yeah. uh, a, a player anymore. All right, number seven. What numbered version of the Mario Kart series was released? Eight. Again, this is the year 2014. Eight. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, that was just a fucking straight up lucky guess. That's amazing. <laughs> that is amazing that you just just pulled that out. Uh, yeah, definitely. It was Mario Kart 8. I believe it was for the uh, the the, uh, the Wii. Uh, Wii U. I think the Wii U is, is what Wii it was U released 14? on. I believe. Oh, the Wii U was around for such a short period of time. Yeah, unfortunately, I mean, it was a, it was innovative. It was it was pretty cool, and the games that were designed for it, I thought, were very well implemented, but um, not very wide adoption. No. A lot of people were not a fan of it. All right, uh, number eight. Which sports series was discontinued by 2K Games? The year 2014. Which sports series? So when I say which sports series, oh, I'm going to give you a choice. I'm going to I'm going to give you multiple choice. So which sports series was discontinued by 2K Games? NBA, mm-hmm. MLB, mm-hmm. or NHL? MLB. Because I fucking hate MLB? baseball. Uh, even though I hate your reasoning, ding, 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 that is correct. MLB was discontinued. Uh, MLB 2K. I'd rather watch hockey any day. Yeah. At least there's a chance of someone getting fucking hurt. Yeah, that happens in baseball, too. Yeah, every once in a while, a fucking pitch goes bad and hits somebody in the chin. Whatever. <laughs> An ankle gets oh, twisted baseball. the wrong way. No- Number nine, which <laughs> numbered version, which numbered version was the current Sony PlayStation? Oh, in the year 2014. PS, ooh, PS3. You say PS3. <clears throat> PlayStation 4 was already out by then. When did it come out? Good question. I'm not sure. Somebody in the chat. Somebody in the chat looked at it. In, in my memory, the PS4 4. came out in 2014. Uh, w Scott is one to see in 2013. Okay. All right. Fine. You got me, bitch. Wrong. <laughs> All right. All right. And finally, number 10. What was the name of the current Microsoft video game console? Oh. Notice that I didn't say what number, which numbered version. What was the name of the current Microsoft video game console? The X Bone. <laughs> See, had I thought about that, I would have known it was a PS4 because that's all anybody cared about because I was deployed when they both came out. Yeah. Yeah. So ding, 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 ding. Yes. Fucking you X-Bone. got that correct. The Xbox One. The X Bone. Was the current version. Yes. Um, exactly. So that means that you got a 7.5 out of 10, meaning that you beat the D! Yay! Hell yeah, hit him with a hard C. <laughs> Amos beat the D with a hard C. Hey man, All right. um, uh, that was crystallography. So we want to talk about some tech news, and I'm going to let you go first because I'm going to basically breeze through mine, and I'd rather do mine at the end. So, you know, that way Squid has as long as possible to enjoy the show before he finally fucking gives up on it. Uh, or should we just annoy Squid now, knowing that there has to be more later, and he's going to miss it if he doesn't listen through my charade? I like that option. Yeah. Yeah, let's okay. let's let's hit let's hit your your okay. column first because I've got something at the end that I I want to uh, kind of be a bit of a segue. Monday morning, uh, Apple came out with WWDC. It was a pre-produced episode. I uh, say episode. It was a pre-produced production, and it was mm-hmm. pretty entertaining. There's some some actual laugh out loud moments involved. They announced several things: iOS 14, iPad OS 14, uh, Mac OS, uh, Big Sur. <clears throat> Watch OS 7, several other things. I'm going to go down the list of stuff that I actually gave a shit about. Um, enhanced widgets 
and an app library to the iPhone. Awesome. I'm using it on my phone right now. It's fucking awesome. New memo. So enhanced widgets, uh, real, real, real quick. Enhanced widgets is basically um, something that uh, Android users are would be used to. Is that is that what we're t- talking about? It's a it's a, it's a ru- it roughly translates to that yes, but it's okay. it's more of a controlled okay. event. You can't do quite as much, and they're not as ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Um, okay. All and, right. What's and, your what's what's the second thing that they grabbed you? And the app library is just it's kind of fucking amazing because I had so many apps on my phone that I didn't have enough screens. I didn't know that was a thing until it happened to me. But whatever. Um. So to automatically oh, put it in folders wow. is fucking fantastic. Uh, new emoji. I don't care. Apple Maps update with cycling in major cities. That's pretty cool. Anytime somebody wants to enhance a free map service, I'm down. Digital car key. You have a bunch of exclamation points next to this. It sounds like this is something you are excited about. I like it because, I mean, you could let someone borrow your car by giving them a, a car key, and you can tell them you can't go past this mile, this speed or whatever else. But it's not coming out until at least 2021 with the new BMW 5i or i5 or whatever. We'll see how it rolls out. But it, it, that, that's something that excites me for the future. It doesn't excite me for right now. Uh, Apple Clips. Hey, I don't have the app installed. Scan it. It gives you the option to use the app without having without having it pre-installed and be able to pay for it right then and there. Log in through Apple, all that other stuff. Awesome. Sounds cool. We'll see how it works. Scribble. Be able to use the uh, the Apple Pencil anywhere on the iPad that you could normally put text, and it translates it and put mm-hmm. inserts the text into that spot for you. I've already used it. It's fucking amazing. It's very accurate. Even for my shitty handwriting kit, it might even be able to transcribe yours. And it's really that would good. be that would be amazing. Yeah, because you guys like chickens look at yours and like, what the fuck is he saying? Um, <laughs> That's right. AirPods coming with spatial audio, and I don't know, I don't remember if this is for all of them or just the AirPods Pro. But they're going to be switching between devices. So if you're on your phone and you put your phone down, you pick up your iPad, then you automatically transfer to your iPad. Just drop that down, open your MacBook Pro, it automatically transfers over. And uh, 5.1, 7.1, and Dolby Atmos coming to AirPods. And I think that's just AirPods Pro, but I'm not sure. Um, uh, sleep tracking on the Apple Watch. Long time coming. There's other apps that have done it. This kind of does it automatically. Uh, I just installed watchOS today, so I'll see how that works out for me. But I usually use this. I usually have my old watch on when I'm sleeping. So I don't know if, that, I don't know if that's going to... I might have to adjust a little bit. Uh, hand washing alert. So when you start washing your hands, when you start doing this motion right here... It can tell that you're washing your hands and tell you, you know, they start doing this motion right here. Anyway. Um, uh, I wonder how many false positives that app is going to get. <laughs> right. It, that's, it starts, it starts singing the hand washing song while I'm rubbing out. I'm going to be pissed off. Cause why am I, using my, <laughs> why am I using my left hand? First of all, second of all, why is my hand washing and my rubbing out so closely mimicked to each other? Um, Apple, Amazon, Google, smart home standard. They're developing a standard, a uh, combined standard, so all the devices can talk across devices. So you can have uh, Echo and a HomeKit and a Google Home all in the same house and all be able to interoperate and not have the junky shit that I have going on right now in my house where I have three switches that are only HomeKit and won't work with the Echoes and I can't get them to fucking... I changed my Wi-Fi. I replaced my Wi-Fi, new SSID and everything else. I can't get those three fucking switches to work. Um, picture in picture. Hey, you're watching video. You want to go check test me- text message. You just swipe over and boop, boop, now the video is playing in a little fucking, uh, you know, Android's had it since 2010. So whatever. Uh, Mac OS Big Sur inches itself closer to iOS. I think this is great. I hate working on my phone. Then I go to pick up my, my MacBook and the options aren't there. It doesn't look the same. I want it to all be the fucking same. Like give me a unified architecture and a unified uh, visual like user experience and they're working towards that and I think that's exciting even though my MacBook Pro is one generation too old to use it so there's that patreon.com slash virtual misery and then Apple <laughs> is switching from Intel chips to ARM chips we kind of knew this was coming if you're into tech news at all uh, and I'm interested to see how how this goes I think this could be really interesting but if you want a really intelligent breakdown on it you can go listen to know a little more featuring Tom Merritt that I help him produce. And uh, we just released an episode on ARM this last week and Monday and Tuesday we covered it on DTNS. So those that's WWDC in as much of a tightly knit shell as I can fucking muster. 
I've I've got uh, did, two things. Did anybody time did, me on that? Tell me somebody time me on that. Uh, <laughs> we can go back to the VOD. Uh, <laughs> the okay, so what do you what do you have on three, it? What, three what, minutes. What, what, quick. What's exciting you? So, so so whenever whenever Apple or anybody else releases a new version of their OS or whatever, it's usually just smoother, faster, more streamlined, whatever. And those are cool. I mean, those are, I like that, but it doesn't stand out. Um, I like things like Apple Watch being able to, uh, or, you know, getting FDA certification for, mm -hmm. uh, as an EKG device. Like that is a game changing thing yep. for me. Uh, digital car key is one of those things that is a game changer thing. It's something that I've been asking for for probably five, six, seven years. Yeah, um, I'm glad it's finally here. My current car will not be able to use it. So here, um, here's my thing about that, that though. baked into. Here's yes. my worry about that, Kent. I can't even get the digital key to work at my hotel room half the fucking time. I'm not ready to trust it with my car yet. So it's 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 coming in the future. Give me a couple of generations and I'll be completely on board. I'm excited that it's on its way. I'm not, it's, it doesn't like, it's not oh. like <gasps> right now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to, it, it's not going to replace a, you know, a physical car key, at least not right away, at least not for me, even if right. my car had that capability. Uh, but to have that capability is just something that is, that's game changing to me. It and updates then, the car uh, as well. Almost as exciting as the sleep tracking on on Apple Watch, um, like you said, long time coming. Uh, but that is something that I think is essential. I get excited about about health technology, personal health. The more that you, an individual can do to self care, yep, is phenomenal. And one of the, the essential things for self care is knowing when something is amiss and. Um, how, how best to help your personal health and this, the sleep app sleep is incredibly important and sleep tracking yep. app built in is it's hugely important for, yep. for that eventual goal of, of like a hundred percent self care. Yep. Um, and I'll, I'll let you know how that goes compared to this, the other sleep app, sleep tracking apps I've used. Um, I'll, maybe I'll do a breakdown between that and sleep. Uh, that would be awesome. I look, I look forward to it. like make spreadsheets. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. Uh, no, that tell, sounds fantastic. tell me about E3. Yeah. So E3 was canceled this year. The end. All right. <laughs> fucking A, man. Cool. So, <laughs> <laughs> so in, in lieu of E3, uh, a lot of the big tech companies that would normally go to E3 and make their big announcements for the year, uh, since E3 wasn't going to happen in person, they decided the next best thing is to have their own um, announcement events. Uh, so I just want to talk about a few of those things. Uh, Microsoft and Sony announced their officially announced their new consoles. So now we have the Xbox Series X coming from Microsoft. Um, I hate their naming convention because uh, X, what is it? Xbox X One X. S X or something like that was the last one or the current one. I don't even know. It's it's so hard to keep track. Um, and then PlayStation Five. It's the fifth PlayStation. Um, <laughs> yeah. So both of those were announced. If you look at a side by side comparison, which IGN has a wonderful breakdown, a side by side chart. I'm 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 gonna, um, I'm gonna open this up and fuck it up in the in the video. Okay, yeah, because this is a yeah, the site does not display no, well. I'm not going to white list you. Not a, there you really. go. Um, they're basically the same hardware. <laughs> there is it's... almost nothing different. <laughs> I was going to say it all looks TBA oh. to me, like everything just says to be announced. But okay. Let's, well, yeah, let's, but go I mean, to the, so, let's go to the top. <laughs> so, so they're both are being released for holiday 2020. Of course, they they both have 4K. Uh, they're Blu-ray players, 16 gigs of uh, GDDR6 RAM. Um, uh, okay, so the the memory bandwidth is a little bit different. I understand them. They both have eight core or uh, eight uh, eight X Zen two cores at three and a half gigahertz. Well, so Sony has or um, Sony's at three and a half. Microsoft's at three point eight. Like, ooh, big difference. Yeah. Pretty much everything else is the same. Um, 
both devices I think are going to be fucking awesome. If you saw any of the trailers for the games coming out, they look absolutely just phenomenal. Uh, the only game that stuck out to me as something that I am super excited to try out is a game for PlayStation 5 called Strays. Have you seen this? No. You're basically a cat in some dystopic future where robots replaced humans, and you're just a cat. Just living your life amongst this dystopia. Uh, I don't know what the actual point of the game is going to be, but it looks fucking great. Uh, do you have any opinion? Uh, Xbox versus PlayStation? Uh, any Anything that was announced about them that, that stood out to you? I okay, so my history is that I've owned an uh, Xbox or a, a PlayStation One, not a P PlayStation, a PlayStation One, like the little white mm. one. I owned a PlayStation One. Right. I owned an Xbox. Yep, an Xbox. I've owned an. I still own an Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty, and I have a PlayStation Four. I like the PlayStation interfer interface. I like their performance. I like their the, the the aesthetics but i like the xbox controller which is why i have an xbox 360 controller up here as my pc controller when yep. i want to play games on my pc uh if i could use an xbox controller on a playstation i would be in hogs heaven but i got kind of big hands so the playstation controller has never quite fit right although they're getting it's getting better and the PlayStation 1, there was, and the PlayStation 2, there was a screw right where my knuckle is right here when I held onto the controller. Oh, jeez. So I, I just fucking couldn't use it. Like, I would just, I would throw the fucking thing away. I don't get um, Yeah. The, and it's getting better. The original PlayStation controller, the, the seam, like where, the, where the, the top half and the bottom half of the controller was joined together, yeah. we used to leave indents on my, on my fingers because of the way that I would, would hold it. Yep. It was quite annoying. So, um, but I've always preferred... Uh, Xbox controller over PlayStation and the con the PlayStation console over Xbox. That's just me. And that makes sense. I think that's a, a, a fairly uh, common. And and uh, games, I, I've i never been one to be like, oh my God, this one system has this one game, so I have to buy it. Like, yep. you know, if, 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 well, if exclusive games come out on the system I own, cool. If I wanted it, I'll go get it. If not, I've never bought a console to get a game. So speaking of exclusive games, uh, one of the, the biggest games for me that was exclusive to PlayStation 4 was Spider-Man. Huh. Holy crap, what a fucking fun game that was. There had There's going to be a PlayStation 5 exclusive as well, uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales, which mm. is a direct sequel to the, the Spider-Man game for PlayStation 4, this time, of course, featuring Miles Morales, and uh, that is pretty exciting. Uh, but other than that, like, I didn't... I don't know. I but, mean, but they're, can't, they're when's faster the last time, and prettier. And, when's the last time you bought a console because of an exclusive game? No, I don't think that's ever happened. No. The people, the, the or, people may, that are maybe, dedicated... Maybe when I got Nintendo Entertainment System because it had Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I it's In my mind, you... <sighs> console exclusive games are for one type of person the type of person that buys both consoles anyway <laughs> like, kind of <laughs> i mean I, I don't know i mean i think the marketing it's like is it's, it's for... like sony it's like sony and microsoft deciding to split the difference like hey we'll both get this guy all right yeah i th well i think the i think the the idea behind it though is to market to to audiences that can only cuz i mean let's be fair most people can afford either an Xbox or a PlayStation, but not both. And if right. you're a big fan of Spider-Man and you know that that game is coming out, you can only afford one. Which one are you going to get? It, you're going with Sony. I still think it's a matter of which one do I buy first? Yeah. Because yeah. if you're a, a console specific gamer kind of person, you're going to get both eventually. It's just a matter of which one do you buy this holiday season and which one do you buy next holiday season? The biggest announcement for for uh, console video games that I was excited about anyway wasn't at the Microsoft or the Sony announcements. This came from EA Games. The new Star Wars game called Squadrons is coming out. So if you've ever been a fan of like X-Wing or Rogue Squadron or any of the... Oh the, my God. Uh, 
the, the I, fighter. I still the have Rogue Squadron, games. and it won't work with my controllers. I can't get it. I can't get it mapped right. I got to install like a, the, I got a, a fucking I and I, uh, like whatever, uh, yaml my way into it and shit. Like it's just, I love Rogue Squadron. God, that's, I love that game. Yeah. So this game is this game is for you. Star Star Wars Squadrons is a, uh, it's a modern. Starfighter game. Um, it's it's going to be on like all the systems. Uh, it's coming out from EA. It looks amazing. So it's got a first player or, or like a uh, a single player mode, and it's got the online multiplayer, yeah. uh, which both modes look freaking awesome. There's a very cool story. This takes place but, after Return of the Jedi. And but it, take but is, turns. It, is it PC cross platform? It is cross platform. P- um, PC cross platform. Oh, that's a good question. I don't Actually, care if Xbox and PlayStation can talk to each other. I want to know if my damn computer that I've sp- sunk thousands of dollars into it can play it and then chit chat with the PC or the the. That it, that is a good question. I do not know the answer to. Head over to ea.com slash games slash Star Wars slash Squadrons, and you can probably find that answer. Uh, uh, but it looks really awesome. You you play as an X wing pilot and a Tie fighter pilot. You kind of take turns. You're, it's telling two stories simultaneously. It's like two different journeys from the mm-hmm. view of the New Republic and the Empire. Looks freaking awesome. And then you can unlock abilities and ships and things like that in the single player version that you can then use in your multiplayer games. It looks just absolutely phenomenal. It's the, it is the Star Wars uh, fighter game that I think everybody has been waiting for. Uh, One freaking help. awesome. The so the last thing that I wanted to mention, uh, big uh, video game news, probably not on this audience's radar, but is very much on my radar. So obviously, as any watchers of Ritual Misery would know, Wait. I'm a big fan of arcade games. Sergeant Muffin still watches this show from time to time. So this absolutely yes, that's a good point. Sergeant Muffin, this is probably on his radar. Uh, Sergeant Muffin is a big fan. He's, he's of probably got pinball. a pre-production model. <laughs> <laughs> That's not unlikely. So at Games, the company that makes the Legends Ultimate Arcade, which is what I use to stream uh, r- just about every other week uh, as of late on the Ritual Misery stream, uh, they are coming out with a virtual pinball machine that's going to be the same concept as the Legends Ultimate where it's going to have a set of built-in games but also be open-ended to where you can add your own games. So if you have, uh, so if you if, if you have bought any like uh, you know like Steam for example, if you've bought any any pinball tables on Steam, uh, if you happen to have any ROMs of pinball games, you can add those. You can basically play any pinball whatsoever on this. Um, at Games is not the only company that that announced a pinball machine coming out. Uh, Arcade One Up. Who really is is the company that that brought uh, home arcade machines into like real possibility for most consumers? Mm-hmm. They're coming out with their pinball machine as well. Uh, but the one that's really, really, really got me excited is the the at games version uh, because it is everything that you could possibly want in a virtual pinball machine. It's full size uh, as opposed to like the the three quarter scale that most other companies. Uh, when when you their... say full size, like how big is the screen? Um, so it's a thirty. So the main screen is a thirty-two inch LCD. Uh, let's see, it's ten eighty by or ten eighty p by sixty frames per second. It's got a secondary panel, a fourteen inch LCD. Uh, this which is like the background, like the right. You know, if you look up on a pinball machine, um. Let's see, it's Wi-Fi capable so that you can up, update your firmware, download new games, things like that. Um, also, online multiplayer. Uh, it's Bluetooth, USB, HDMI built in. Um, let's see, what else? Live streaming capabilities. Uh, online uh, high score saves, uh, leaderboards, leagues, like esports style uh, stuff is built in. It's got nudge and tilt capability with a, with a built-in accelerometer. 
so that if you bang the side of the machine, it will simulate that in the gameplay, just like it, with a real life uh, pinball machine. But does it have haptic- a? Does, I was going to say, does it have a haptic motor in it to give me the rumble back from when the it, ball hits it the does. sides? Yep, it does. It does have haptic feedback where <clears throat> when you when you smack the ball with the with the um, paddle, the paddle. Thank you. Um, <laughs> you will feel that in your hand when you push the when you push it. It will also every time the the um, you know if you hit some of the um, oh man my my pinball. Uh, nomenclature is failing me, but the, the bumpers? like the big things, like the big bell things in the middle. If you hit it, it's like ding, 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 ding. What the hell are those called? Uh, thanks, vocabulary. Thanks, uh, brain being over forty years old. Anyway, <laughs> uh, when you hit those, and there's a little bit of a shake to the machine in real life, you're going to get that haptic feedback as well. We, we always um, just call them bumpers. I don't. Yeah, bumpers. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure that's yeah. not the real name, but that's what we call them. Because we, 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 I didn't care. <laughs> I, th- I think, yeah, I think so. And also, if you're familiar with the with the company Farsight, they're a big maker of of virtual uh, pinball software and things like that, with a lot of big licenses. Um, uh, I mean, just just look them up. I, I don't even want to get started because the list is too long. Uh, so we're gonna get we're gonna a lot get a lot of uh, really cool licensed games on the system built in, and plus you'll be able to add whatever you want. I am so looking forward to this. I'm gonna make room in my little uh, what's becoming a home arcade room. Uh, I am definitely gonna make room for that pinball machine. I cannot wait for this thing. Uh, which, Sounds awesome. which leads me to my next point. So when it comes to home arcades, there is a very, very engaged and active community online, but it's very, very niche. It's all, it only consists of like several hundred people. <laughs> uh, but one of the big names in that community goes by the, goes by the name P-Dubs. Uh, his name is Patrick Walton. He's a YouTuber. He does a lot of uh, tutorials about how to how to hack and mod home arcade systems to include the At Games uh, Legends Ultimate Machine. He is now doing a show uh, in conjunction or in um, I guess sponsors. I don't know. I'm gonna have to ask him exactly how it works. Uh, but he is doing an, an online show with one of the other streamers where. Um, he, he does, it's basically like news. It's like, it's like the at games. Uh, so think sports center, right? Think sports center on ESPN for sports. This is called game center or legend center. That's what's called legend center. <laughs> I'm it's so glad you, sport- you, you write your ad copy ahead of time. <laughs> I know me too. It's basically sports center, but for home arcade systems in particular, the at games systems. Um, he's a big deal in the community. And he has he has graciously agreed to be our guest on next week's episode. Nice. So I am really looking forward to nerding out about arcade stuff next week with Patrick, aka P Dubs. P Dubs. P Dubs. Um, you know what I'm yeah. going to be geeking out about next week. What might that be? This um, next article. It, this I, I have an article to share. Okay. Okay. This right. is this, this is, is a this is a Verge article, and I'm just gonna read the headline, and then I'm gonna explain it, and and you're gonna understand just how fucking genius this is. This is. Okay. The headline reads: Hamilton is censored on Disney Plus. Lin Manuel Miranda gives two fucks. <laughs> I know what this refers to. Not only does it fucking rhyme. But later on down the the article, it quotes Lin Manuel Miranda saying, "I literally gave two fucks so the kids could see it." That is fantastic. That is I, a I know what brilliant this fucking to. line. Hamilton has three instances of the word "fuck." Yes, and in order to go on Disney Plus, it's got to be PG thirteen or less. Yes, which one of the MPAA requirements for a PG thirteen movie, with some exceptions. One of the MPAA requirements is that you can have no more than one use of the word fuck. Yes. Now, Hamilton actually has four uses of the word fuck in the entire musical. One of Ooh. them is preemptively bleeped out. 
during the performance. Oh, then this this is a part of the show. Is this the one where they're like, "Fuck," just yeah. like trails off? No, it is. Okay. Uh, sit down, John. You fat mother. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. So that's one of the ones, and then there's three that actually are verbalized during the, during it, and two of them are bleeped out. One of them remains in. It's going to be kind of a uh, almost an Easter egg hunt to figure out who or which one is the is the one that got left in. But there's still plenty of of shits and and other things like that. Like it's not a vulgar musical, but it does it does maintain a hip hop uh, sensibility to the language. Um, yeah. So this comes out a week from today. In about one week and three and a half hours. Not that I'm counting. <laughs> uh, I don't know. On, why why in the world would you be counting? Uh, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's a ten dual command. Anyway, um I am so excited to watch this to actually see the full thing without just the little piecemeal that you can get online or the little hack version you can get if you look up gay porn or gay musicals on Pornhub. Um, <laughs> we, we've already discussed this and, yes, yes. uh, yes. uh, yeah, really looking forward to it. I am hopefully tonight. If I get, if I, if I get the last piece, I'll be rele- releasing a teaser for a new project that Jenny Richard and I are working on. Uh, the first episode is going to cover Hamilton and that teaser is going to be out on the let's talk about Thrones feed. Hopefully tonight. Oh, oh. Oh, wow. I wasn't expecting anything this early. Oh my gosh. Yes. Okay. So we, we have, we, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to get that out. Uh, but there will be a new everything as soon as I get all the stuff like submitted. And, um, yeah, we're going to, we're going to start taking on these little projects and for Hamilton itself on July 5th at noon Pacific time on the ritual misery discord, uh, bit.ly slash slash rmp discord at noon pacific i'll be doing i'll be hosting a uh hamilton watch party on our discord so if you don't have disney plus and you want to virtually come to my house and watch it with me then uh feel free to stop in the discord i'm sure there'll be plenty of of indicators that there's plenty of people there watching so you'll see where to go uh, bit.ly slash RMP discord, July 5th at noon Pacific. And, uh, we'll sit down and we'll watch it and we'll probably pause after all the, uh, I'll probably plan on pausing the presentation after all the show stoppers, which are the, the big songs that usually end in audience applause. Um, mm-hmm. because it is almost three hours long. So it's not a, it's not a short watch. Um, and there's a mandatory break in between the first and second acts, but that's just show business. Um, but yeah, the, I, I will be watching it as soon as it comes out and then I'll be watching it on the fifth and then probably the evening of the fifth, we will record, uh, a, a review of it with Jenny Richard and I. That is freaking awesome. I am very much looking forward to this. I want to see the play when I, when I took a trip to New York about a year and a half ago, we on, on our checklist of things that uh, that we had to do was see a Broadway show. Yeah. And my number one choice was to see Hamilton. Yeah. Unfortunately, it was something like 850 bucks per ticket for nosebleeds. <laughs> so I was like, that's a little outside the budget. Yeah. So we went to a show and got, I think it was like second row middle seats for like a hundred bucks each. Yeah. And I thought that was a much better experience. I still wait, well, wait, uh, wait, wait, wait. You thought it, you thought it was a pleasant experience. You don't know that it was much better. Well, no, 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 no. Because you mean, could have been in the nosebleeds uh, at eight hundred bucks and had your fucking mind blown. So you don't know that it's a, it was a better, you, but it was a very pleasant experience. You can't. Re- it was a You can't relate to the experience yes. you didn't have. That's correct. That's <laughs> correct. I was disappointed. I wasn't able to see Hamilton, but I my my uh, budget was not prepared to accept yeah. that high price. So I'm very much looking forward to being able to see, and not just the, not just the stage production of Hamilton, but the original cast yes. stage production of Hamilton. Yep. Uh, that's going to be awesome. That's going to be awesome. So, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty exciting. And, uh, yeah, looking, f- looking forward to all of that, just all of that. That's going to be so fucking funny. Hell yeah, man. 
Um, all right. Hey, uh, if you want to support the show, you can go on over to ritualmisery.com slash swag. We do have some Ritual Misery merch up there. We don't have a face mask. Like, we should really get a face mask. <gasps> oh, yeah, yes, we should. DTNS That's has one. You can go buy theirs. That that helps support me, but not Kent. <laughs> yeah. We, we, need to get a, we need to get an RMP mask. That is, we, that is we need to get an RMP mask do. that has the DTNS mask underneath it and then just has RMP like stenciled across it. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> um, Amazing. So uh, you can find me on Ritual Misery, or at, not at Ritual Misery. You can find the show at Ritual Misery. You can find me at Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E, where I am typically harassing the shit out of my local senators because they suck, or <laughs> uh, furthering the cause of different things that I can only support and not speak to. So. There's that. Yeah, and I do? am RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter. Uh, check, you never know when I'm going to tweet and what I'm going to tweet about. So check me out over there. Yep. Um, and of course, you can follow the show at Ritual Misery. Not a whole lot gets posted there, but it, I mean, you know, you find out that I'm going to be on at least an hour early, maybe. <laughs> but if you really want to get involved, cruise on over to the Discord, bit.ly slash RMP Discord if you're a patron. Or a subscriber on Twitch, you get some extra perks. No one really uses those. You should all, y'all should start using those because I'm in fucking Discord all the time now because, because. Um, so you should really we, start using those. those also, perks. we have we have live chat after shows with yes. our audience. I'm, I'm actually right? currently streaming the show to, uh, to the the Discord. So if you were unable to watch on Twitch or you're mobile or whatever else, and you need to save some bandwidth, you'd be able to listen right there on the old Discord. Hell yeah. Uh, speaking of, of being live, we're live every Thursday, 7 p.m. Pacific on twitch.tv slash ritual misery. I think we're still carried on diamondclub.tv unconfirmed at this moment. <laughs> We've returned to unconfirmed on the diamondclub.tv. <laughs> That's welcome to ritual misery. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey, uh, just so we're clear, man. Uh, we want to thank Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use his music and all the resources he has provided. Basically, the entire internet in Hollywood, a uh, single man show there. So, uh, thank you for Absolutely. listening, for Kent, for me, and for you. This has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> R-A-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y. Thank you, Flavor Toothpaste!